On July 25, 2021, Tunisian President Kais Saeed fired Prime Minister Hicham Machichi and adjourned Parliament. Speaker Rached Ganouchi, leader of the Enada Party, the largest Muslim Brotherhood Party in Parliament, called the incident a coup. The heart of Tunisia, Atiya, and Al Karama groups are also calling it a coup. The secular, free Desturian party, a supporter of former dictator Ben Ali, has not commented. On the other hand, the Chaab party, which has 15 seats out of 216 in the parliament, has directly supported the president. People have taken to the streets for and against the president. In this context, Discussions have begun on how successful Tunisia is in calling the Arab Spring a successful democracy. A Reuters report says the international statement on the Tunisian case depends on who is for or against the Islamist group. Western nations, including the United States, could not decide what to say about Tunisia. On July 26, the United States expressed its concern over the Tunisian incident and called for stability. However, the incident was not a coup, he said. France, a former Tunisian colonial power, has called for the rule of law in Tunisia and called on all political parties to renounce violence. The EU also called on all parties to abide by the constitution and to refrain from violence. A spokesman for the German government told reporters that they did not intend to call it a coup. They said they would talk to the Tunisian ambassador in Berlin. The Egyptian government has called the Tunisian president's decision of war on brotherhood terrorists. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhin called the Tunisian foreign minister and hoped for security, stability and development in the country. Only Turkey has directly criticized the Tunisian president. Om Çelik, a spokesman for the ruling AK party, called the Tunisian incident a coup in a Twitter message. Tunisia's Enida party has always had good relations with the AK party. Many, including the Free Dasturian party, see this as an attempt to influence Turkey in Tunisia. The talks have divided Tunisia since Turkey's intervention in the Libyan war. An article in G0 Media by the US think tank Eurasia Group says that the Tunisian people think that the current politicians are as corrupt as the politicians of the previous dictator Ben Ali's government. They have all failed to provide a better life for ordinary citizens as promised by democracy. Politicians have run the country through fragile coalitions because there are so many parties in parliament, which has resulted in indecision in parliament and economic stagnation in public life. And the people's confidence in the whole political system has crumbled. The Tunisian people have been on the streets for the past year. The number of people on the streets was the highest in the last decade. The stagnant economy growing inequality. Inadequate public services and declining job opportunities were the main reasons for people's dissatisfaction. Before the epidemic began, the youth unemployment rate in Tunisia was 36%. Naturally, the youth have led the movement. The situation has worsened since the corona epidemic began. Tourism is an important part of the Tunisian economy, employing a large number of people. It has completely collapsed due to the epidemic. Thousands of people from Tunisia are crossing the sea to Italy. The purpose is to find work in Europe. In 2020, the number of such immigrant candidates has increased five times. In an interview with Vox magazine, Sarah Yarkas, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, a U.S. think tank, sought an explanation for the political turmoil in Tunisia. Tunisia's dictator Zine El Abidine Ben Ali's government collapsed during the Arab Spring in 2011, and a multi-party democracy emerged. 
The largest party in parliament is the Ennada party with only a quarter of the seats. Those who carry the thought of the Muslim Brotherhood. Although they got the highest number of votes in the last decade, they had to go to the coalition to form the government. Opposing them is the Free Dasturian Party, a group of supporters of former dictator Ben Ali, who favors Tunisia's good relations with France. The party, led by Abir Moussi, is completely secular and completely opposed to Islamist groups like Enida. There is also the al Karama coalition. Those who are Islamic parties and they think that Enida is not Islamic enough and Enida is not worried enough about the existence of Islam in the state. President K. Syed is no longer part of any party. Although he was against Enida from the beginning, he is not a part of secular parties. In Tunisian politics, the rivalry between Islamist parties and purely secular parties is significant. At first there was a tendency for the parties to form a coalition by compromise. But later the parliamentarians started fighting. That is why Islamist groups such as the ultra-secular Free Destroyer and Al-Karama, led by Abir Musi, have become important. The geopolitical importance of Tunisia, located on the international maritime trade route along the Mediterranean coast, is considerable. Tunisia's importance has increased since Turkey's involvement in the Libyan war. Turkey's conflict with France in particular has escalated. France, a former Tunisian colonial power, does not want to see Turkish influence here. That is why it is not a matter of concern for France to take over the power of President K. Syed. But it does not want to see the supporters of Enida on the streets. Here, however, the United States and the EU have simultaneously refrained from criticizing Syed. Which is discouraging the development of relations between Enida and Turkey. Turkey's intervention in Libya was accepted by the West, but not in Tunisia. After the Arab Spring, it was not Tunisia's so-called democratic success, but geopolitical competition that controlled the country's destiny. In other words, geographical security is now more important to Western nations than the implementation of the ideological thinking of Western democracies.